Does fruit make us fat? What you need to know about fructose. A review of the literature found that increased consumption of fructose, the main sugar found in fruit, contributes to insulin resistance and weight gain. There is even a theory behind why this happens. Specific studies suggest that the human body has evolved to respond to fructose by triggering hunger, thirst, weight gain, and fat accumulation. And the reason for this is our hunter-gatherer ancestors would benefit from gorging themselves with fruit when they could find it during the summer to prepare their bodies for winter where food availability was scarce. So if we've evolved to respond so poorly to fructose and research is showing is making us insulin resistant and obese, then fruit has to go, right? So let's talk about what fructose is and how it can promote obesity. Fructose is a sugar found in fruit as well as in high fructose corn syrup and a lot of processed foods. It's a simple sugar that is primarily metabolized by the liver. Liver. Research has shown that when the liver is metabolizing a lot of fructose, the liver can accumulate fat leading to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. NOFLD or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is related to obesity because the two can feed each other and create a vicious cycle. It is the number one reason people have liver disease now in the United States. In this particular paper, it suggests that a fatty liver begins to become inflamed and progress to a fibrotic and eventually a non-alcoholic steatosis. This damage to the liver alters the body in a way that promotes more fat storage. Fructose can also contribute to obesity by damaging the gut. The enzyme fructokinase, which is produced to help metabolize fructose, can actually damage the gut barrier or the gut microbiome leading to leaky gut. So it'll actually induce damage to the small intestinal lining. This increases inflammation, which further promotes fatty liver, poor metabolic health, and obesity. Research has shown that when mice have had the fructokinase enzyme removed, they do not develop NOFLD or obesity when consuming fructose. I can imagine what you're probably thinking, if this is all true, it's time to get fruit out of my diet not so fast. It's important to point out that there is a big difference between naturally occurring fructose found in fruit and processed foods containing typically high fructose corn syrup. So let me give you an example. The difference number one, if we look at a banana in a small, just green banana, you could get five, 10 or more grams of fructose sugar. In a candy bar, you might get 17 grams. In a soda can, you might get 38 grams. In an apple, you might have 7.6 grams versus apple juice, you might get 37 grams of sugar. So it's important to find that distinction. These processed products have a great deal more fructose in them than the fiber and density of consuming a food found in nature. Next is the type. A lot of the fructose that is being consumed in our society is in the form of high fructose corn syrup, which we know is toxic and high inflammatory. A review of the literature found that increased intake of high fructose corn syrup led to an increased risk of developing NOFLD. High fructose corn syrup is created from cornstarch and contains a combination of both fructose and glucose. Even worse is that this study found that the fructose content of high fructose corn syrup beverages and foods is actually a lot higher than advertised. So let the buyer beware. Not all those food labels are actually reflective of the products that you're consuming. Another big difference is the food that the fructose comes from from. In another study, fruit consumption is actually protective of NOFLD for men and women. So actually eating fruit, having the fiber, digesting it, breaking down is very different than consuming fructose-laden processed foods. We know that fiber contains fruit, which can slow blood sugar spikes or blood glucose spikes and keep insulin levels lower, helping to reduce fat storage. We know it also is important for helping to regulate butyrate in the gut, which codes for genes that create proteins that protect the gut microbiome. And we know that naturally occurring fructose also doesn't require very much insulin production to manage, which means lower insulin levels and less fat storage. Processed foods that contain high levels of fructose are also typically high in calories and other pro-inflammatory processed ingredients that can both contribute to weight gain, hint like seed oils. I'm interrupting this video to talk to you about my amazing understanding macros guide that you can grab below. It is super helpful for fully understanding protein, fat, and carbs. 
and how you can utilize them to help support your body in perimenopause and beyond. They're also typically hyper palatable, making them harder to stop eating. Think about that advertisement for Doritos. You can never just have one. That's a great example of how processed foods hijack our brain into thinking we can just continue to eat. I don't believe that when individuals that are insulin sensitive consume food that they have to be particularly worrisome about gaining fat. However, this doesn't mean that fruit has no ability to contribute to fat gain. I think I've talked about a story where I had a diabetic patient that was consuming five to six bananas a day. It is still sugar. Fruit does contain calories, so overeating food could potentially lead to an increase in fat storage. If you are not insulin sensitive, if you are diabetic, you have metabolic disease, you're probably much better off limiting the amount of fructose you consume, even in the form of fruit. Insulin resistance is a key contributor to obesity. It's really important to understand that most, if not all of Americans are not insulin sensitive. It's around 92 to 93% of us. And fruit does contain sugar. So for someone who is insulin resistant, consuming a lot of fruit, remember my diabetic patient that was consuming multiple bananas a day could further contribute to insulin resistance, drive obesity, and also poor metabolic health. Here are several ways to avoid fructose gain from fruit. Choose lower glycemic fruits like berries, citrus fruits, just green bananas, a tart apple that don't intentionally provoke a significant blood glucose spike. You can consume fruit before your workout because muscles can absorb blood glucose without the help of insulin. And you want to avoid processed foods high in fructose, especially high fructose corn syrup. Additionally, if you consume some type of fructose, being physically active can also be very beneficial for helping to assimilate some of that fructose readily into the body as opposed to eating the processed junk that will contribute to further issues. Stay tuned for the next video talking about the effectiveness of losing fat without exercise.